Here are 11 psychological facts about women that you should know if you want to become the lover they desire. 93% of men do not know these facts and are rejected when they try to conquer a woman. Watch this video because by knowing these facts about them, you will be part of the 7% of the most attractive men in the world. Before we begin, I would appreciate it if you liked the video. You can help me continue spreading the stoic philosophy. If you are not subscribed, I recommend you subscribe and activate the bell to avoid missing any videos. If you like the topic of this video, please comment with a number one. If you don't, please comment with a number two to let me know so I can make better videos in the future. Psychological fact number one, women like womanizers. There's a phenomenon called pre-selection that reveals that women find men three times more attractive when they notice the interest of other women in them. This also happens when a man is surrounded by more women. So I suggest you get some female friends and start going out with them and observe how other women look at you. These friends don't necessarily have to interest you more than just for company and to create that pre-selection effect on you that will increase the interest of other women in you, making it easier for you to flirt with the woman you really like, the alpha. If you know how much you help me by liking this video, you would do it right now. Did you already do it? Okay, let's continue. Psychological fact number two, women fall in love based on smell. A study found that if a woman likes a man's smell, her chances of falling in love with him increase by 85%. According to the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, women have 50% more neurons in the olfactory bulb than men, making them more sensory lovers. That is why, if you understand how to select the right fragrance, you will have a significant advantage in the game of seduction. Stay until the end of the video to find out which fragrances stimulate their senses the most. Psychological fact number three, they are drawn to men who have their way. If you go too far with a woman at first, you will almost certainly face rejection. However, if you show respect and a little neediness for her, she will make herself available to you. Develop trust with her and feel free to touch her. It's always a matter of reading her body language and recognizing the signals or gestures she uses when she wants to be close to you. Psychological fact number four, they feel something for you but don't tell you. If a woman interests you, it's essential to avoid being her friend from the moment you meet her. According to a study, 68% of women admitted to considering having a love affair with a guy if they had known they could get their way. That's why I suggest you make it clear from the beginning, not directly, but by sub-communicating that you like her. If you want to know how, ask me in the comments. Psychological fact number five. If she teases you, she's interested in you. If a woman teases you and gives you nicknames, it's very likely that she's attracted to you and uses this playful way to build trust with you. Because when it comes to falling in love, women don't know how to act other than through body language and this kind of playful teasing. I suggest you help her achieve her goal if you're really interested in her by showing interest in her as well. One strategy you can use to take advantage of her game is to play along with her by telling her what she wants to hear. You can say something like, I know you call me that because you like me. Do you think I haven't noticed the way you? Psychological fact number six, women love men who understand their language. Women appreciate it when you notice the signals they emit through their body language, consciously or unconsciously. As not all men know how to read these signals or the language they use most to fall in love, women tend to be more shy than men. They're afraid to express their love for you first. They detest rejection and therefore avoid it at all costs. The idea of a man rejecting them doesn't even cross their minds. That's why they use their body language to tell you how they feel. If a woman makes a gesture to intentionally make you fall in love, she expects you to play along. And if she sees that you don't catch what she's trying to tell you with the signal, she simply stays silent. And forgets about it. If you're interested in learning about these signals in women's body language, ask me in the comments. The next piece of information is a very interesting strategy that you can use. Psychological fact number seven. Women are concerned about their appearance while engaging in intimate activities. Women are particular about the design and color of what they wear underneath their clothes, but they are most concerned with maintaining a good appearance when engaging in intimate activities. So instead of remaining silent, compliment her on how nice her lingerie looks. You'll notice that by boosting her ego in this way, she'll be more likely to wear a much prettier and more eye-catching outfit for you, which will serve as motivation for her to see you again. Psychological fact number eight. Women experience more sensations with a man who connects with them. When you understand the psychological complexity of the female mind, you can enhance her satisfaction when engaging in intimate activities. Because women are less physical than men and operate more with the mind and sensations. That's why I suggest you be less direct with women and be more subcommunicative. Strive to be a little more emotional so that you can easily connect with them. 
take your time with her before doing anything together. Ask her questions that prompt her to express herself emotionally, and this will make her feel that you understand her very well. And believe me, she will fall much more in love with you. With the following piece of information, you must be very careful. Psychological fact number nine. Women love their friends more than their partners. Some women are capable of loving their best friend more than their boyfriend. It has been proven that women's friends have the ability to stimulate their emotions more. Because when a woman leaves her partner at home to meet with a friend, her mind enters a more sensitive state. As she heads to that encounter with her friend, she has no prejudice. She knows he won't judge her and will support her emotionally. With their friend, they receive an emotional satisfaction that makes them confuse this feeling with love. So it's better to prevent your girl from having any trusted friend because there can be a betrayal at any moment unless the friend has wings of an angel. Psychological fact number 10. Women accept dates just for food. According to statistics conducted in the United States, surprisingly, 38% of women accept dates just to get free food. Highlighting the complexity of recognizing the motivation behind a woman saying yes to a date. So, I recommend that before asking a girl out, make sure she's really interested in you. Ask me in the comments if you want to know how to tell if a girl is interested in you. Remember, at the end of the video, I'll tell you which fragrance you should use to stimulate her senses. Psychological fact number 11. When they are upset, they prefer you to approach them. If a woman is upset with you, she will feel better if you try to figure out why she is upset by paying attention and showing empathy. Understanding them can be difficult at times, but they were born with the ability to experience emotions. They are not as emotionally stable as us men. Both positive and negative emotions stimulate them. That's why they often fall for the guy who mistreats them. I'll explain it later. For the time being, get used to the emotional games that women enjoy playing. Regarding psychological fact number two about which scent stimulates women, here are some of the aromatic essences that most stimulate women. Jasmine and lavender. In 2017, a study was conducted with two groups of men and one group of women. Each of these women spent time with two men individually. One of them wore a perfume lacking these two fragrances, while the other wore a perfume made with a jasmine-based aroma. It was found that jasmine-based fragrances efficiently stimulate women and make them feel more attracted to the man wearing them. You can find several perfumes with these fragrances on the market, such as the famous French Orpheon or the Pays Basque Eclectic. Thank you for watching the video until the end. Please like this video, subscribe, and leave your comment. Until next time. Epictetus, the great Stoic philosopher, said that the goal is to surround yourself with people who pull you up and inspire you to be your best. You've undoubtedly heard the expression, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Today, we'll look at that concept through a Stoic lens. Before we begin, we will explore the seven categories of people that might impede your development in Stoic philosophy and how to negotiate these difficult situations. I'd love it if you could get the video so you can help me to spread the Stoic philosophy. If you are not already subscribed, I encourage that you do so and activate the bell so that you do not miss any videos. Number one, the victim. Consider life to be a game of chess, with each player having the same pieces and the same aim. The opponent's king is checkmated. You plan ahead of time, make some sacrifices, and take some chances. The victim, on the other hand, blames the board, the pieces, or even their opponent for every bad move they make. They're always in checkmate, not as a result of their choices, but as a result of an outside power acting against them. Their story is a never-ending tale of adversity, with themselves as the powerless protagonist. I can't advance in my career because my employer dislikes me, or I can't get in shape because I have poor genetics. Now it is critical to recognize that some people experience actual challenges as well as systemic issues. However, the victim in question utilizes their situation as an excuse to avoid taking responsibility for their actions or lack thereof. You can become enmeshed in their plot, possibly as a supporting character who is always needed to save them. Assume you've spent numerous hours listening to a buddy blame their never-ending line of unsuccessful relationships only on their ex-partners. This not only wastes your time, but it may also subtly persuade you to adopt a victim perspective in your own life. So how do you proceed when dealing with a victim? It may be tempting to become their rescuer, providing unending guidance and emotional support, but the Stoics would advise against it. 
they would advise you to set a clear boundary to preserve your mental health. You might use a technique called compassionate detachment. Show empathy and kindness, but don't try to save them. They must handle their own difficulties. Provide a listening ear, but avoid being their continuous problem solution. Marcus Aurelius famously remarked that the finest retribution is to be unlike the one who committed the injustice. If you find yourself drawn into the victim's narrative, fight the impulse to become one yourself. Instead, take charge of your own game board, make your moves, and remember that being permanently in checkmate is frequently a choice, not a fate, in the chess game of life. Keep your pieces going ahead, make strategic sacrifices when required, and play for development and knowledge rather than vengeance or pity. Number 2. The Drama Magnet Consider your life to be a ship cruising over peaceful waters until you come across the vortex known as the drama magnet. This person appears to have an endless succession of crises, disputes, or controversies, and they have a disconcerting capacity to drag you into their vortex of instability. You could be drawn to the intensity of the drama magnets at first, mistaking it for passion or excitement. However, you'll quickly find that being in their realms is taxing and risky, much like piloting a ship through a storm. What makes working with drama magnets so difficult is that their problems frequently feel like your own. Their anarchy is contagious. You can even find yourself engaged in disputes in which you have no prior involvement. Consider the following scenario. You have a buddy that frequently clashes with other people in your social group. They're not talking to Kate today. Mario will be next. Your buddy seeks your help, but you see that this cycle never stops and you find yourself at odds with Kate or Mario because you attempted to interfere. In this scenario, instead of providing advice or choosing sides, try introspective listening and echoing their thoughts back to them. For example, if they remark, I can't believe Kate said that about me, you may react, so Kate's words have betrayed me. This strategy enables you to offer emotional support without becoming involved in the drama. Yourself. Another strategy, which may appear paradoxical, is to become selectively unavailable. Stoicism teaches us to value our time, which sometimes means being unavailable for other people's problems, especially if they reoccur without resolution. Turn off your phone during specific hours, Set out time to focus completely on your job or personal growth and make it clear that you are not to be interrupted during these times. Seneca True. Pleasure comes from enjoying the current moment without worrying about the future. This is very useful when dealing with drama magnets. Instead of worrying about the next catastrophe, focus on the current moment where you have control, enjoy your life, and don't allow it be disturbed by someone else's drama. Make a point of sailing your ship peacefully avoiding whirlpools that jeopardize your journey to personal progress and calmness. Number three, the complainer. We've all got that friend, family member, or coworker that always finds something wrong with everything, whether it's the weather, their job, or even the cuisine at a renowned restaurant. They never pass up a chance to show their displeasure. You may be wondering why this matters to me. I can simply disregard them. That, however, is easier said than done. Consistent exposure to such negativity drains your mental well-being. It's like a leaky faucet gradually emptying your store of emotional vitality. Stoicism instructs us to focus on practical solutions rather than issues. Consider the following scenario. You're working on a project with someone who is often complaining. Each meeting devolves into a tiring round of complaints with little useful discourse. As the team's morale deteriorates, you get distracted from discovering practical answers, and you may become progressively disgusted with the project and potentially with life in general. So how can stoicism assist us in dealing with a complainer? There are numerous approaches you may take. First, restrict your contact with this person whenever possible. If that isn't possible, maybe because they are a family member or coworker, your second choice is to mentally detach yourself from them during their rants. Consider their criticisms to be a passing storm, noisy and disturbing, but ultimately insignificant in comparison to the immovable mountain that is your own inner peace. Your third option is to redirect the conversation or change the subject to something more constructive. Marcus Aurelius, 
You control your thoughts, not external events. When you realize this, you will discover strength. This timeless stoic wisdom urges us to vigilantly defend our mental serenity, ensuring that the negativity of chronic complainers does not distract us from our stoic path of perseverance and virtue. Number four, the naysayer. Consider yourself an artist working on a canvas. Each brush stroke enhances the color, depth, and vibrancy of your vision. Enter the skeptic. They go into your studio, take a look at your work, and instantly start criticizing it. Are you certain about the hue that doesn't appear realistic? You already know that most artists never get it perfect. Their remarks, like gray paint strokes, begin to diminish your colorful canvas. This isn't your typical constructive critique, however it may be useful. Instead, it's a continuous aura of skepticism and hostility. Assume you're enthusiastic about exploring a new job path. You've done your homework, spoken with industry experts, and perhaps even attended a few basic courses. When you express your excitement with the skeptics, they rapidly list all the reasons why it won't work. The market is overcrowded. Do you have the necessary skills? What if you fail too soon? Their uncertainties begin to feel like your own, and the confident your eyesight is beginning to sway. How do you deal with a skeptic, especially if they are close to you? Rather than simply presenting your objectives or aspirations, one uncommon yet successful technique is to ask them for advice. People in advisory roles are less likely to oppose your ideas directly and may provide more useful comments. Instead of absorbing their negativity, another option includes changing the script through a technique known as positive confrontation. Encourage them to come up with solutions. If they suggest you'll never be able to change occupations at this point, respond with an intriguing viewpoint. How do you believe someone could effectively change careers? This not only deflects criticism, but also stimulates more positive discourse. Remember the teachings of Epictetus, the Stoic philosopher. Because we have two ears and one mouth, we can listen twice as much as we can talk. Listening does not imply taking in everyone's criticism. It entails distinguishing useful input from noise. Take a step back, listen, think, and continue painting your own life with the colors that speak to you when the doubters begin to obscure your canvas with their shades of doubt. Don't allow anyone transform your colorful creation into a monotonous gray landscape. Number five, the time vampire. Consider your everyday routine to be a well-crafted symphony. When each instrument symbolizes a work or responsibility, they form a wonderful balance until the time vampire joins in, shrieking off pitch, drowning out your song and converting your beautiful masterpiece into discordant cacophony. Vampires are not always evil. In fact, they may appear rather benign. It could be a coworker who constantly interrupts you with trivial questions, transforming your productive workday into a series of fragmented moments. Or it could be a friend who invites you to countless social events that you don't want to attend making you feel obligated to attend and draining your time and energy. These interactions may appear little in the moment, but the cumulative effect may be tremendously disruptive. So how can you prevent a time vampire from ruining your symphony? The Pomodoro Technique, a time management tool that includes splitting your work into 25-minute segments typically separated by brief breaks, is one effective option. You make it plain that you are not to be bothered during certain intervals. This creates a barrier that prevents your most productive periods from getting eaten away if you are dealing with a social time vampire. Remember that saying no is not just acceptable. It is necessary for your well-being. Instead of detailed explanations, a simple, I appreciate the invitation, but I can't make it would work. According to Seneca, refusing an invitation is a confirmation of your own needs and priorities, not a rejection of the individual. Life, if lived well, is long enough. Stoicism emphasizes that time is one of our most valuable resources, and it should be used carefully. It's the canvas on which we paint the portrait of our life, and we should be very picky about who and what gets a brush stroke. Make sure that each note, instrument, and melody in your life's big masterpiece coincide with your greater purpose. Don't let a time vampire's cacophonous incursion disrupt your symphony.
As we approach the conclusion of today's examination of the characters who might derail our road towards stoic resilience and wisdom, hold the baton firmly and conduct your life with purpose, ensuring that every moment is a note beautifully played in your harmonic masterpiece. Number six, the toxic positivist. When you're going through a difficult time, they're the ones that encourage you to simply be cheerful, dismissing your sentiments and experiences with a flippant wave of sparkly optimism. Consider your life to be a garden. Flowers are present, but so are weeds and bugs. A poisonous positivist, on the other hand, refuses to see anything that isn't a budding rose. Aphids will appear on your leaves. Just concentrate on the flowers. They tell you not to bring negativity into your garden. While it may appear to be encouraging, their approach may leave you feeling rejected and removed from reality. You're upset, bewildered, and looking for emotional balance if you're going through a difficult breakup. The advice of the toxic positivist. The water is teeming with fish. Simply grin and be happy. Excessive optimism ignores the intricacies of human emotion and the realities of life's obstacles. How can you grow your garden without allowing poisonous positivists to trample it with their indiscriminate sprinkling of positive vibes? The only option is to engage them in a conversation that includes both light and shade. Look on the bright side, they say, and you have your health. Yes, I'm glad for my health, but it's also fair for me to be furious about this particular situation. Both are compatible. You may also use what psychologists refer to as emotional granularity, which is the capacity to feel and distinguish between a wide spectrum of emotions, both good and negative. Because of X, I'm feeling a little down today, which is okay. Referencing stoic thinking may be a freeing confirmation. Seneca once remarked that genuine pleasure is understanding our duty to God and man and enjoying the now without worrying about the future. Take note of the balance between comprehending unpleasant obligations and enjoying the moment. A stoic attitude does not focus only on the good or bad. Rather, it embraces life's complexities with serenity. So, the next time a poisonous positivist dumps confetti on your well-kept garden, take a step back and realize that a garden requires both sunlight and rain to thrive. Accept your entire emotional range and continue to nurture your garden with the richness and complexity it deserves. Number seven, the manipulator. Consider your life to be a script for a movie. You're the main character and you have an idea of how your narrative should play out, where the twists will come from, who your allies and mentors will be, and what your final act will look like. Enter the manipulator, the shady producer who quietly rewrites your script without your knowledge until one day you discover your tale has deviated from its original path. The manipulator is an expert in emotional or psychological manipulation. They may use flattery, guilt trips, or even deception to guide you in a path that favors them. You could have a buddy who constantly gets you to pay for dinner by saying something like, you know, I've been having a rough month and you're so successful. It wouldn't mean much to you but would make my day better. Over time, you realize that your generosity has been used. But calling them out seems awkward since they frame it as a favor to a friend in need. Handling a manipulator may be difficult. Fogging is a technique used by certain specialists to oppose their techniques. This strategy entails accepting any truth in the manipulator's assertions, but refusing to be affected by emotional persuasion. You may react if they claim you're so successful, you should pay for supper. You are right that I have been performing well but let us share the bill as usual. Another strategy is to establish and enforce defined limits. If the manipulator asks you to lend them money or commit to duties that you don't want to do, learn to say no assertively. Maintain a cool tone and straightforward communication. I can't lend money, but I can offer emotional assistance that maintains the connection while setting a limit borrowing inspiration from stoic ideas. Epictetus cautioned us that while we cannot control our external circumstances, we can always control how we respond to them. The manipulator profits from your predicted emotions. They use your generosity, remorse, or need for acceptance. By responding differently, you reclaim control of your script. So if you come across a manipulator in your life, remember that you're the one with the pen. Your storyline is yours to write, 
and while the cast may include a variety of characters, your journey should always be guided by your own values and decisions. Reclaim your script, and don't allow anyone change the course of your life. Let us not overlook the importance of self-awareness. It's simple to spot these personalities in others, but the more difficult and instructive challenge is to look for them in yourself. Are you accidentally performing one of these roles in the life of someone else? Remember that Stoicism is about more than simply managing the environment. It is also about knowing and developing oneself. If today's debate prompted a discovery, an epiphany, or even just some contemplation, please share your thoughts in the comments below. Write your opinions, share your experiences, and let's have a conversation that benefits us all. So, until the next time, may your decisions reflect your values, your actions reflect your knowledge, and your life be the masterpiece you were born to make. Imagine stepping into a room where your arrival shifts the atmosphere. Your entry commands respect, your contributions are immediately recognized, and your opinions are sought after. This isn't just wishful thinking, it's the result of mastering an ancient art, one that is steeped in stoic wisdom. Today you're about to learn the nine powerful psychological strategies that can elevate your standing and make you a priority in any situation. You know the frustration of being undervalued and overlooked. You put in the effort, but it seems like you're a shadow even in broad daylight. It's a common story, but it doesn't have to be yours. Stoicism offers a counterintuitive lesson. True value comes from within and is not diminished by external oversight. Yet it's undeniable that gaining priority in the eyes of others can lead to significant advantages, whether in your career or personal life. These strategies we're about to explore aren't just theoretical. They are practical, actionable, and have stood the test of time. They will not only earn you the recognition you deserve, but will also bolster your inner fortitude. As we delve into these strategies, keep in mind that they are more than just techniques. They are part of a transformative process, a shift in mindset that begins with how you see yourself and radiates outward. So if you're ready to not just be noticed but to be given precedence, stay with me. This is not about capturing a fleeting moment of attention. It's about establishing a powerful presence that persists and makes an impact well beyond your initial interaction. Let's start the process toward a more respected, prioritized you. Number one, command your space. Let's get straight to the heart of it. You wouldn't stand for second place in the office, on the field, or at the gym, so why accept it in life's pecking order? It's not about ego, it's about respect for yourself above all. When you choose to invest your time and energy, do it where it counts. If there's no mutual recognition of worth, it's time to reassess your alliances. By choosing environments where your value is acknowledged, you naturally elevate your status. Remember, you don't have the reins on how others value you, but you're the emperor of your own self-regard. Want to be the main act in life's play? Start by giving yourself the lead role in your personal epic. Number two, master the art of presence by absence. It's a basic law of nature. The scarce resource is the most valued. If gold was as common as gravel, it would be worth as much. Apply this to your presence. When you're always on tap, you become just another part of the landscape easy to overlook. No stoic sage ever won respect by being at everyone's beck and call. Let's keep it real simple. Be the gold, not the gravel. It's not about playing games or measuring out your minutes with a miser's hand. It's about having a life so engaging, so full of purpose and passion, that your availability is naturally limited. You're not hiding away. You're rising up, engaging in pursuits that sharpen your mind and fortify your soul. And here's the clincher. When you do grant someone your time, it's not just another slot in your schedule. It's an event. They'll feel it too. Your presence becomes a privilege, not a given. Number three, forge your own joy. Here's a straight shot of truth. Anchoring your happiness to someone else is like building a house on sand. It shifts and crumbles without warning. The man who is master of his own joy holds a power no one can strip away. Stoicism isn't about suppressing emotion. It's about sourcing your satisfaction from the ironclad parts of life you control. Ever notice how folks are drawn to someone who's got their act together? That's no fluke. It's the magnetism of self-sufficiency. Find pleasure in your daily routine, your personal achievements, the quiet moments of contemplation. This isn't about retreating to a solitary life. It's about being so grounded in your own happiness that you become the rock, not the waves crashing against it. That's the kind of man who doesn't just end up on someone's priority list. He tops it. Number four, cultivate the fear of losing you. Let's look at a hard-hitting strategy. 
showing the world what it means to miss you. It's a truth as old as time. We often don't realize the worth of something until it's no longer around. This isn't about manipulation, it's about demonstrating your intrinsic worth. The Stoics believed in the power of self-sufficiency and not being overly attached to external validation. Now this isn't about playing games or giving someone the cold shoulder. It's subtler than that. It's about making your time and your emotional investment something that isn't guaranteed. Pull back a little. Let your presence be something they earn. Diversify your attention. Spread your time across your interests and relationships. When you do, something shifts. They start wondering about you, about what has changed. That space you leave prompts reflection on your value, and most importantly, the fear of losing your place in their life. This has to be done with a nuanced touch. You're not vanishing, you're recalibrating your attention. Show that while you value them, your world is vast and full of places and people who value you in return. When done right, you create a balance where they start to appreciate your worth and naturally want to move you higher up on their list of priorities. Remember, a man who knows his worth makes the world take notice. Your balanced withdrawal is a reminder of your value. It's not about making them chase you. It's about showing them what they stand to lose if they don't step up. Number five, hold the power to step back. The ultimate act of self-respect, the readiness to fold them and walk away. Whether it's a negotiation, a bad deal, or a one-sided relationship, the willingness to step back is the purest form of self-prioritization. Stoicism teaches us to detach from outcomes and focus on our actions and values. This isn't about giving up. It's about stepping up for your well-being. In the grand theater of life, knowing when to exit stage left is as important as making an entrance. It's not a rash move, nor is it a surrender. It's a strategic retreat. Remember, the strongest position you can ever hold is one where you're not bound by the need for any single outcome. Think of it like this. Every time you're willing to walk away, you send a signal flare into the world that says, I value myself enough not to settle. This isn't about arrogance, it's about self-assurance. And the moment you start to move away is often the very moment that others begin to take a step closer, recognizing the value they stand to lose. Walking away isn't an end, it's a declaration of worth a pause for reflection, a space where you weigh the scales of your life. Does this situation merit your time, your energy, your passion? If not, you have the strength, the courage, and the stoic wisdom to withdraw and redirect those resources to where they are recognized and valued. So hold this power close, use it wisely, and with a clear heart. Sometimes the most powerful move you can make is to take a step back, and in doing so, you may just find that everything else takes a step forward. Number six. The currency of investment. Investment is the cornerstone of value. Think about it. The more you pour into something, the more you're committed to its success and value. This principle is crucial in relationships as well. By encouraging others to invest in you, their perception of your importance naturally increases. How do you do this? It's all about balance. Yes, you should be approachable, but not at the expense of being undervalued. Let's say you have an opportunity to spend time together, but you're genuinely tied up. Communicate this. It's not about playing hard to get. It's about being honest with your commitments. This integrity shows that you're a man of substance, not just passing time. When they do make an effort to fit into your schedule, acknowledge it. Appreciation can be a powerful reinforcer. It subtly lets them know that their effort is noticed and that not everyone gets the same privilege. This is the dance of give and take where they extend effort, and you in turn recognize it making every interaction count. The key here is not to stretch this to the extreme. You're not building walls, you're setting standards. This is not about being superior, it's about mutual respect. When they understand that time with you is not a given but a gift, you become a priority. It's the delicate balance of stoic wisdom, knowing your worth and allowing others to realize it through their own valuation. Number seven, keep your orbit command their interest. Let's delve into the paradox of desire. The world chases after what retreats from it. The rarest treasures are those not easily gained. In your relationships, if you make someone your son, your entire world revolving around them, you risk becoming just another satellite, predictable, constant, taken for granted. Consider the opposite, a life where you are the sun and others are drawn into your gravity. It's about cultivating a life so rich, so interesting that you don't need to orbit anyone else and they feel the pull of your passions, your projects, your growth. This isn't about playing hard to get. It's about being hard to forget. You know that old saying, the grass is always greener on the other side? 
there's truth to it. People are naturally intrigued by the unattainable, the unoccupied, the sovereign. So when you stay invested in your path, when you don't make them the epicenter of your existence, you become the greener grass. You're not aloof, you're self-aligned, and in that self-alignment you become a mystery, a challenge, a goal. Your presence becomes a reward, not a given. And suddenly, you'll find they're seeking your attention, not the other way around. This is the essence of Aura, the secret to becoming a priority in their lives without even asking for it. Number 8. The Allure of the Unsaid Mystery has always had a magnetic pull. In a world where oversharing is the norm, holding back is a power move. A stoic knows the value of silence and the strength in reserve. When it comes to relationships and interactions, revealing every card in your hand is not just unnecessary, it's unwise. The people you meet should earn every piece they learn about you. So how do you maintain this mystique? Start by sharing just enough to pique interest, a tease of your depth, not the full story. Your hobbies, your passions, your dreams, let them out in trickles, not floods. When asked about your past, give them a canvas with broad strokes, not the fine details. This isn't deceit, it's discretion. This approach stirs curiosity, invites the other person to lean in, to question, to seek more. And in doing so, you become the puzzle they can't help but want to solve. In their minds, you grow in importance simply because you're not an open book. There's always another layer to uncover, another aspect to discover. In essence, you're inviting them on an adventure to uncover the treasure that is knowing you. But they won't find this treasure lying on the surface. It's hidden, it's valuable, and it's worth their time and effort. This is how you embed yourself in someone's thoughts, becoming a priority because the human psyche is wired to value what it doesn't fully understand. Number 9. The Art of Silence Silence speaks volumes. In a world cluttered with constant noise and chatter, the absence of your voice can be louder than its presence. If you're always the one reaching out, initiating every conversation, you may unwittingly lessen your value in the eyes of others. It's human nature. We chase that which retreats from us. Consider the strength of a silent approach. When you hold back, you're sending a clear signal. Your attention is not given lightly. It must be earned. This isn't about playing games or manipulation. It's rooted in a deep respect for oneself. It's a powerful display of self-sufficiency, echoing the stoic belief that inner peace and contentment come from within, not from external validation. By pausing your impulses to initiate contact, you create space. In this space, the other party has room to move towards you. It's a testament to their interest and the value they place on your relationship. If they reach out, it reaffirms your connection. If they don't, it provides you with valuable information about where you truly stand. This tactic should not be about testing the other person, but rather about rebalancing the dynamics of your interaction. It's an opportunity for reflection for both parties, and when the conversation restarts, it's on a more even keel with a deeper appreciation for the dialogue and the individuals involved. In closing, your blueprint to becoming a priority. As we draw the curtain on these nine strategies, it's essential to engrave the underlying philosophy into your approach. You are the architect of your worth and the master of your destiny. These strategies are not mere manipulations, but reflections of the strength and poise that come from the Stoic tradition, embracing inner fortitude and the power of a self-reliant spirit. Bear in mind that while these tactics can shift the scales in your favor, they're not magical incantations that compel others to prioritize you. People have their agency, their choices, and their free will. What these strategies do is allow you to present yourself as a person of value, a person who respects themselves enough not to settle for less. In embracing these steps, you're not just seeking to change the external perception, but to elevate your intrinsic valuation. Whether it's cultivating happiness within, maintaining a touch of mystery, or the strategic retreat of your presence, each step is about enhancing your self-regard. It's also a journey of balance, balancing kindness with self-respect, availability with self-importance, and investment with self-preservation. In the Stoic view, it is this balance that is the hallmark of a life well-lived. So as you embark on this path, do so with mindfulness and integrity. Make these strategies your allies, but let your character be your guide. Thank you for investing your time with us. As you step forward, remember that the most significant priority is to live a life true to yourself with wisdom, courage, and a sense of Stoic serenity. If this video resonated with you, if it prompted a nod or sparked contemplation, let's solidify that connection. Feel free to click the like button. It's a simple gesture for you but holds immense value for us. It signals that we're moving in the right direction, delivering content that aligns with and enriches your life. 
If you haven't already, we invite you to subscribe and become part of our community of like-minded individuals. Here we delve deeply into the nuances of leading a purposeful and conviction-filled life. By subscribing, you're not just accessing content. You're staking your place in a community that upholds stoic virtues such as wisdom, courage, justice, and moderation. Every like and subscription serves as a foundational element in crafting content that empowers you. So if you're prepared to embark on this journey alongside us, make your mark, like subscribe and let's traverse this path together.